Welcome back to Around the World in 80 Telescopes, a live 24-hour webcast that's part of the 100 Hours of Astronomy project for the International Year of Astronomy. You're joining us at the European Southern Observatory headquarters near Munich in Germany as we visit some of the most advanced telescopes both on and off the planet. We're now going to the Allen Telescope Array in Arizona. But before we join them live, let's find out about them in this video. Yeah, well, back in 1997, the SETI Institute decided to hold a series of workshops to figure out what to do for the next 20 years in SETI. And the results of the workshop were published in a study uh, called SETI 2020. And one chapter of that workshop re recommended that the Institute pursue funds to develop uh, a new type of telescope, an array of, of a very large number of relatively small dishes. So a few years into the project, we uh, uh, erected uh, uh, three antennas uh, on the Hat Creek site where the ATA was. And it was a really exciting time. I'm excited about doing large surveys and finding objects which may not have been discovered yet. With the sensitivity that we can muster with the full ATA, and a very large field of view, I think we have very good chances of finding something new with this telescope. Use these small dishes, they have a, a very wide field of view, so we see lots of sky all at once, and we're looking for new phenomena, so that's ideal. Uh, we want to cover a lot of area on the sky. In the fly's eye mode, we point them all in different directions, we see 200 square degrees at any given moment. An ATA telescope is probably one of the simpler telescopes, the simplest designs uh, on the planet. Uh, the simplicity partly derives from the fact that we have to replicate these. Uh, our aim is for 350 such antennas. The thing about the Allen Telescope Array is speed. It enhances the speed with which we, at the SETI Institute, can explore the stars and targets throughout the galaxy looking signals. It enhances the speed with which our radio astronomy colleagues can survey the sky. It's all about speed. The Allen Telescope Array is the first truly Moore's Law uh, facility. So we gather more information at the telescope, at each of the individual telescopes, than we can possibly process today. And we have chosen to bring that information to a signal processing building as an analog signal on optical fiber. So we don't digitize it out at the telescope. So that means we bring all the information the telescope is possible of collecting to a processing lab. And inside, then we decide to digitize it. And we use equipment that we can afford today, knowing full well that the equipment will get cheaper and wider band in the future. At the Allen Telescope Array, we will be able to conduct SETI observations almost 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Because of the unique nature of the telescope, we can do commensal observing. The telescope is designed to do many things at once. We can be looking at a radio galaxy and making an image of that galaxy. And it's a very distant galaxy, but along that direction, there are stars in our own galaxy that we have selected, pre-selected to be like the sun. And whenever someone is making an image of that galaxy, we will look at those stars in the foreground and examine them for signals. This is wonderful and um, easy to do. Uh, the first images we popped out, total hydrogen images uh, that showed pretty much the whole structure in just a few hours of observing initially. Pretty much the the image that uh, uh, that the ATA has become. It's, uh, it's a wonderful hydrogen machine, very good for continuum imaging, 
uh, has a very wide field of view, which allows this kind of imaging in a single shot. And um, it says a lot about the quality of the images that the ATA is able to produce. And we can bring new pieces of digital equipment in, plug them in, and do a completely different kind of experiment. When we did the Fly's Eye experiment, we, uh, with a group of students, we assembled together in the lab a, a new piece of hardware. It took about six weeks to do that, and we ran up to the telescope and we plugged it in, and, uh, and we used the telescope in a way that nobody had planned on using it. Uh, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for continued kind of, kind of work along those, those lines. We're now going live to the Allen Telescope Array. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do at the observatory? Sure. My name is uh, Garrett Keating. I'm a member of the science and engineering staff here at the Allen Telescope Array. Uh, I do everything from run observations to do some software development and even uh, give tours and talks to visitors who come here to the site. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about the observatory and the location? Sure. Uh, we're about 250 miles north of San Francisco, California. Uh, we've been here for about 50 years now. We started out actually with a giant 85-foot dish, uh, moved into interferometry with having multiple telescopes a few years later, and uh, used to house a, a telescope array called BIMA. Uh, BIMA looked at wavelengths that were a uh, millimeter, so smaller than the width of your pinky. And uh, that stayed here for several years, up until about around 2001, when a really great guy named Paul Allen uh, gave us uh, some funding to help build the Allen Telescope Array. And as it sits right now, we've got 42 telescopes built and running observations as we speak. And I understand that when it's completed, there'll be uh, about 350 telescopes. Is that correct? That's right. There'll be 350 telescopes uh, stretching over the longest uh, distance between two telescopes will be about a kilometer. And when do you expect the completion? It's kind of hard to say. Uh, it depends on many factors. There's still some technological breakthroughs we have to make as well as some funding breakthroughs too. Uh, but we're hoping sometime in the next couple of years we'll be able to build that for Okay, Garrett, can you tell us uh, what kind of astronomical research is done there and maybe some of the highlights of the Allen Telescope Array? Sure. So at the Allen Telescope Array right here, we're dealing with some really small, agile dishes, uh, which means that they've got a large field of view and that they can move across the sky real quick, which makes them really, really good for survey work. So the kind of surveys that we're conducting are basically looking all across the sky for objects like transients, so things like supernova, things that are basically there one day and gone the next. Uh, we're also looking for extraterrestrial life with our SETI search. Uh, we're looking also at some really large-scale objects that can't be imaged as well with larger telescopes. Because we've got small dishes, we can really look at a much larger wide field of view and get some really large-scale objects that can't, just can't be done as well anywhere else. And also the ATA is being used to map hydrogen in the universe. Can you talk about the importance of that in astronomy? Yeah, uh, you know, hydrogen gas makes up the vast majority of what makes up our universe. And uh, it goes from everything from, you know, post-Big Bang to galactic evolution to stellar formation. So being able to understand where that hydrogen is, how it coalesces together to form galaxies, and how galaxies evolve, uh, essentially it's, it's basically tra tracing the entire evolution of uh, our, our universe. Okay, and what kind of research are you working on personally, Garrett? Uh, personally, I work on a project called Real-Time Imaging. Um, and basically what that is is that conventionally radio astronomers have recorded data off of telescopes, they record it onto a hard drive, and they 